Joining us now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be hitting the CES cage on January 8th as he looks to claim gold fighting for the welterweight title against Gil DeFreitas. It is Chris Curtis, who is 12-4 and four in his career. He has won back-to-back fights in five out of his last six. And Chris, appreciate the time. My understanding is originally from Ohio, and you are training out in California, so kind of how all that kind of take place. Yeah, man, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, born and raised, but uh, right now for this fight, you know, it's a big one, so right now I'm out in California uh, training my team quest, trying to get ready for this, make sure we prepared. It's been an uh, interesting change of pace, to say the least, but I mean, it's awesome. How, how is, uh, uh, how's training at Team Quest a little different than, you know, training in Cincinnati? Man, it's a, it's a big eye-opener, man. You know, Cincinnati, that kind of became the big fish in that very small pond. Out here, man, like, first of all, no one from California is actually from California. Like, everybody can transplant somewhere else. So, like, as far as fights go, man, it's kind of weird to see all these different styles and backgrounds all play. So, I mean, I'm not used, I kind of got used to walking into a gym and not getting beat up, so it's been a, an interesting change to go to a gym and get beat up by, you know, I got body slammed today by freaking Soka Juice. So, you know, how often does that happen at home? So, it's a, definitely a big, big change. But I'm getting better by the day. I'm working with UFC, active fighters, Delator vets. You know, it's, I'm getting better every day. So, I'm, I'm loving it. Did you kind of feel like you, you had to get maybe a little bit of a change of scenery to, uh, you know, elevate your game and take your, yourself to another level? Well, I mean, def- definitely that, man. You have to. Too many people get caught in the trap to where, like I said, you know, you're one of the best guy in your area and you want to stay there. People don't like being tested. People don't like having to go back to the drawing board, back to square one. And, you know, there's some people who will, you know, they'll make it to the UFC never leaving their home gym, but it'll only take you so far, man. Like, I don't – I've got no desire to stay, you know, the best guy, you know, in, a, you know, in my state. I don't care. I'm trying to get in the UFC – I'm trying to go far, so I go where there are people pursuing that same goal, man. And I found a really good group of guys, so I mean, it's been a blast. Obviously, this uh, this fight coming up here on Access TV, there's going to be a lot of people that it, probably this is going to be their first time ever seeing you fight. So how would you describe yourself as a fighter? Uh, I mean, me, I'm a guy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I used to be a wild guy. I'm a striker by far. But, I mean, I'm a very creative striker. I love to hit people. I love to find openings. I love to pick guys apart and just tear them down, man. And I'm fun to watch. Like, you're never going to see me and want to try to ride a guy out for 15 minutes and just kind of, you know, squeak by. It's not how I fight, man. It's not what I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it for 15 minutes or 25 minutes now. Nobody wants to see me do that for 25 minutes. Like, I'm in there trying to win. I'm trying to put a guy away with punches, kicks, knees, however I can, man. It's just, I'm, I'm very aware. I'm not a big guy who's going to just kind of want to cruise. Like, I want to put you away in the back. Of the way. How is training different for this fight when, you know, you mentioned you're, you're training for a 25-minute fight as opposed to 15. How do you how do you change up at all? Or is it simply you're, you're, you're training the same, you just know that uh, potentially you may have to fight for, you know, 25 minutes? Uh, for me, it's, it's not too, too very much. I'm all like, I'm a guy who's, uh, you know, even to my detriment, I train a lot. I train full time. I train, you know, at home five, six hours a day. So now it's actually a matter of me stepping back and saying, okay, instead of doing six hours a day, how about we do everything based on the fact that that 25 minute fight. So a lot more intensity, but we're cutting my time down to keep me healthy and keep me strong. So that's been working out nice. You know, I'm not running my, not running myself into the ground. We're going every day with a set plan of what I'm doing in the morning, afternoon. That's it. So, I mean, actually, what, I'm like three, three and a half weeks out right now, I guess, maybe, and I'm not beat up, I'm not injured, I'm not crawling out of bed. So, it's actually, you know, it's been a nice change of pace to have people that know what they're doing and kind of help guide me along the way. How much of the change in training camps out the Team Quest has really, for you, been maybe an education process of how to, uh, you know, train to, to allow your body to be in peak physical condition on fight night? Well, it's been a big part, man, because you got, you know, you got a lot of guys out here who have been in the UFC, who are still in the UFC. And everybody comes from different backgrounds. You know, we got wrestlers, boxers, kickboxers. So it's kind of nice to be able to talk to people and get everyone else's 
I've, I've got dudes and opinions on how to taper. Like, my biggest thing is, man, I'm really, I've always been bad at tapering. I always try to go 110% up until, you know, like the last few days of camp. So it's nice to know that, you know, I won't, I'm a guy who won't tell myself, like, okay, take a day off. But it's, it's nice to be able to have people say, okay, you put your work in, take a half day or take a day off. You know, it's, it's it's, it's kind of a relief, man. I run myself into the ground, so it's nice to know that people see that I'm doing my work, and they're like, okay, well, you need to rest. So I should actually be healthy for this fight, which will be the first time in a long time, so I'm excited about that. And, of course, uh, this fight coming up here, once again, we're joined by Chris Curtis, who's going to be uh, challenging Gilda Freitas for the welterweight title at CES MMA 32, January 8th on Access TV. Uh, before we start kind of talking about your fight against Gil here, uh, outside, what do you do outside of uh, the you know training to kind of you know just have fun? What kind of hobbies do you have? Man, I am a proud, proud, proud nerd. So, I mean, I am a video game guy, comic book guy, so I anime manga guy. I'm a big, re- I like to read a lot. I mean, this is just outside of fighting, man. I got fighting, kids, outside of that, I'm just trying to hang out and decompress, man. I'm a homebody. I'm not a guy who parties a lot, man, so I've got pretty narrow focus on what I do. But, I mean, I just got home from the gym. I'm going to hang out for about an hour, watch some cartoons. Catch up on a family guy before I go run and go back to practice. I mean, I'm, I'm a very late guy, dude, man. I fight, I come home, I rest, and I watch cartoons and play video games. I'm like 28 years old, going on 15. What, what's the go to video game right now? Uh, man, it's sad right now because I didn't bring my PlayStation with me. So I'm uh, actually staying at Sam, I'll smile and Sam Alvey's house. And uh, I've been putting in some work on uh, Star Wars Battlefront because he's terrible at it. <laughs> I've been helping him out, but it's absolutely horrible. So right now, there's a lot of Star Wars Battlefront. But back home, I was a uh, like man, like waste deep in the Fallout Four. Man, it took about hours upon hours of life wasted in Fallout Four. When you have a hobby like that, do you think it's ultimately great at being a fighter because it allows you to keep your mind off? the day in day out grind of being a fighter or do you think there's there's positives and negatives to having an activity outside of fighting that you really enjoy uh for me man i have to say it's definitely a blessing because i a lot of fighters myself including me like i'm, I'm a head case if i don't allow myself something to that's not fighting because i mean if you let me i'll think about fighting all day every day i wake up i'll think about training you know, I leave the gym, I'm thinking about the fight, and it wears on you, man. It burns you out, and I've been in situations before to where I didn't allow myself to kind of relax, and I was burned out far before the fight even happened because I'd spent, you know, all those hours, 24 hours a day thinking about fighting. So you definitely need something that's as far away from fighting as possible to take your mind off. And for me, man, it's like, you know, video games, cartoons, reading, it just gets me away from it. So like, you know, I've learned now that once I leave the gym, I'm out of the gym until I go back. Like, I'm not thinking about it. You know, I have specific times where I think about it, and boom. But I had to keep that in my mind because I'll, it'll become all-consuming. And, then, you know, it, 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 people are like, oh, you know, you need that drive and that, you know, all-consumingness to a point, man. But I'm 28 years old. I've been doing this full-time for a long time now. If you let it consume you like that, man, you start kind of sacrificing family and friends and everything else. It's just it becomes a job and you don't, you, you can never let fighting just become a job and mentally because it becomes the worst job you'll ever have. And when you look at your opponent here, Gil, it won the vacant Walter Boy title back in October when he submitted Chip Barraza Pollard won you know, several fights in a row here. Uh, people think of Gil, they, they look at the submissions, only had three submissions, but people know how dangerous he is on the ground. Uh, when you, when you think outside of submissions, what are also some of the dangerous aspects that he brings to the cage? Uh, from what I've seen, man, like, you know, I, yeah, he's good. And he's good. He's got good submissions, but I don't really, I'm not really concerned about that. Honestly, like I've been submitted once in my pro and amateur career, like happened one time. And, uh, you know, I've learned from that dude, he, he's a power puncher, man. He's, he's tough. He comes forward and he's there. You know, he's got a willingness to brawl. The thing is you can't let the guy, a guy like that set up and get into a brawling match. You, know, you can't move your feet and just swing. Like, that's how people are going to swing really bad. Well. Uh, 
And and start looking at the fight, uh, you know, ultimately, if if you say to yourself, I have to do this one thing to ensure walking away with with a victory and becoming the CES MMA welterweight champion, what is it? Uh, for me, just patient. All of it comes down to either be patient because a guy like this, he's strong, he throws hard, but he leaves himself open, and I. I'm not a big, if you watch me fight, I'm not a guy who's going to go out there and throw big, crazy balls. I don't believe that's intelligent. Like, I come from with a, I come from a boxing background more than anything else. I have to prefer precision. So, uh, he's going to make a mistake. And when he, every time he does, I'm going to chip away a little bit more. Just a matter, you know, don't get paid, don't get frustrated. He's going to, he's going to stand there. He'll take his hit. But I mean, it's like anything else, man. It's like, you know, it's like a, it's like whittling away at a statue. Now I'm making a statue right now. I'm just chipping off pieces and more, more and more and more. And eventually I'm going to chip off just enough to put him down. So it's just patience for me. I'll, I'll put him away. And of course, this is going to be a, a part of CES MMA 32. You say you're going to put him away. Is it, is it, are you, are you calling, is it a knockout submission? Are you calling your shot. You say, you know what? I'm just going to put him away. Me. Watch me, watch me fight, watch Gil fight. Like we're not going 25 minutes. Like it's we, it's not against him. He doesn't want to hang out for 25 minutes. Neither do I. We both go out there fight. It's not going 25 minutes. I plan on putting him away. I know he plans on putting me away. So we're just gonna see who you know, who's calling this right. But I've got complete faith in myself, 110 percent, and I know he does too. So I mean, we're gonna see who's calling it right. And, of course, this fight will be a part of CSM May 32, January the 8th in Rhode Island. Chris, appreciate time and good luck in the fight. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, guys.